What's up my friends, welcome back. This is the Flash Forge Adventure 3 and in this video we'll make a review about this 3D printer. This is a quite medium sized printer, but for actually a quite affordable price. So I will go into more details in this video, but before we start I have to say that I was amazed by the printing quality of this printer and that was something I wasn't expecting to get. It's the first time that I'm using a Flash Forge 3D printer. But for now I'm quite impressed and we will see the results with more details later in the video. But as for a short description, this printer costs $3.99. It is already 100% assembled when you buy it, it is ready to use just in 2 minutes, it also has a removable and flexible printing bed, because of the enclosure you can print ABS a lot better, it also looks nice and for some of you that's also important, it has a lid screw on both sides of the Z axis, it also has a removable nozzle and that's very easy to change, it has a built-in camera and access to Wi-Fi so you could print directly from the cloud and at the same time you can see the printing process with a small camera. It has a touchscreen, you can see the print from above and also from the sides because it has transparent walls and also a small LED aside of the nozzle and that's pretty much it. But the best thing about all this is the printing quality, which I think you will like it too. After I've done some tests, one of the main downsides of this printer is that the bed is only 150 by 150 mm The rest, for this price, I think is quite reasonable. But let's see all the specs with more details. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. Let's see this Flash Forge Adventure 3 3D printer. First thing first, when you receive it, the printer is 100% assembled out from the box. You also receive the power cable, some tools and some Vaseline for the rods and 300 grams spool of filament. In my case this is red color. And that's it, we can directly plug this and turn it on using the side switch and then this is ready to print. So let's see the specs and then we'll make some print tests and see the final results. First, the printing area is 150 by 150 mm, which is not that big. In case that you need a bigger printer all the time, well, consider looking for a different printer. Flashforge has a few other models on their website. Ok, so the bed is not that big, but it has a removable plate and that is very easy to take out. Make sure it is not hot. Press the plastic part and remove the plate. The bed is also covered by some sort of Biltec material and I have to say that the print will stick quite well to this surface. And by the way the plate is also flexible, so that will help you to remove the prints once they are finished. Especially for big prints, just bend the bed and it will pop out and you'll be able to remove it very easy. The bed has a belt driven system underneath with a smooth rod on one side and the roller on the other side, so no calibration for this one. All you have to do is to select bed calibration in the menu. Then the nozzle will get lower till it gets close to the bed. Then use the menu to lift or lower the z-axis till it slightly touches the bed and that's it. We have to trust that the bed is already leveled and that's because it is quite small and I think that's ok. You could use a sheet of paper for the calibration. Then the printer will home itself and be ready for print. Ok, next we have the nozzle. I've seen this kind of nozzle for the Anycubic i3 printer as well. In my opinion it is a very good nozzle and for this printer by default it is 0.4mm. But it's very easy to change. You have to press these plastic parts and the nozzle will pop right out and you could insert the new one. For different nozzle sizes you could check the Flashford website where you could order a new bed a new nozzle or the entire nozzle block. The filament is driven by a Bowden system and the step motor is hidden here on this side inside of the printer. As you can see it is screwed in place and all you have to do is to insert the filament and select feed in from the screen. It will heat up and then you have to wait till you see the new filament coming out from the nozzle. Ok, so maybe this is a thing that you won't like. But you have to fit the filament spool inside here and if you don't have a spool this size, it won't fit, so you need an external spool holder. I've also asked for some filament from Flash Forge and in this case I have a white and a black PLA material, so we could make more tests. But if you have a good size spool, just put it here and close the case and it will look a lot better. 
Ok, so let's see more specs. The entire case is closed, so you will have a very low temperature variation, so that's good for printing ABS. And yes, the bed could get up to 100 degrees, so ABS will stick very well to the bed, and the nozzle could also get up to 240 degrees Celsius. You will get from cold to 200 degrees in under 40 seconds, and I think this is quite fast. Ok, so other features that we have is the wireless connection and access to the cloud. You could connect to Wi-Fi or maybe using the Ethernet cable. Then you have to enter the cloud settings and you will get a user code. And then you have to go to the given website by FlashForge and enter using that username. Once you are connected you could control the printer from anywhere in the world if you have an internet connection. You could send the prints directly from the cloud and the printer will start automatically. It also has a built-in camera so you could see the process while printing via internet. You can't use this camera for a time-lapse video, but anyway for this it's quite good. I really like the case of this printer and that also makes it quite quiet. Compared with other printers I have to say that this one is very silent, especially when you close the door. This door has some magnets on the top and bottom corners so it will stay closed. You have transparent walls on the top on the left side and also on the front door, so you could see the print. You can enable an LED from the menu right next to the nozzle, in case that you want to see the printing layers with more details. Ok, so let's see the prints. I've made my first test in 2 minutes after opening the box, and that was the test cube that the printer has on its memory, and by the way, in order to print you have the internal memory, the USB for a pen drive or you could use the cloud connection. Ok, so the first print with the cube turned out with no errors. I mean look at these layers. I think that for the first print this has amazing quality. But let's print other objects. To slice these objects FlashForge will give you the FlashPrint software. So download that from their website. Install it and select Adventure 3 Printer. Now open a 3D object, select the settings for the infield, the parameters and so on and save the file to the pen drive. Now insert that drive into the printer, select print and open the drive. And as you can see this is quite cool, you can see the object in a small photo in order to know which model you are printing. So I think this is very cool. Select the file and print. The printer will home itself, heat up the bed and the nozzle and start printing. Ok, so I've made another print using PLA material for this Rick and Morty pickle model. This print is good, I mean really good. Look at these layers. Everything looks how it should, and I'm more than satisfied with this print. Actually, I'm still quite impressed by the printing quality of this printer. The results are good even for these tiny teeth, the tongue and the small letters on the bottom. Ok, another PLA print with this gold color was this owl. And again I've got great results. I mean these are very good details, good layers and good infill. You have multiple settings in the FlashForge software for extra details, but that will print even slower. The feathers of this owl have great details, and on the back we have perfect layers. Everything is printed with the default nozzle of 0.4mm. Ok, now let's test some ABS. For that I will use this pearl white ABS filament. The printer was able to get to 240 degrees for the nozzle and 100 degrees for the bed. Again, I'm impressed. This ABS part turned out perfect as well. No wrapping, no detaching from the bed and the print is very very good. I think this is probably my best ABS print till now and we could even send this print, because ABS is easier to send. So what do you think, for me these are good results for ABS printing. The enclosed printer will keep a good temperature so we have no wrapped layers. So I guess that ABS is no problem for this printer. I've made a Benchy file as well using the same red PLA material as before. The print turned out very good with some errors on the front part of the boat. I usually get some wiring with this print especially here on the boat door. But the part is very clean and the layers once again are perfect. I should probably use more perimeters because I can still see the infill pattern through the walls. I've also tested this white PETG white filament for a vase object. The vase turned out ok as well, so printing PETG is also good. I've made more prints such as this other PLA vase with blue color and this woman body using black PLA material. 
So guys, after all these examples, I can say that the quality price ratio for this printer is really good. I mean you will definitely find other printers under $200, as the Ender 3 or Tivo printer. But in this case, I was able to get better prints and we also have the enclosed printer and that's better for printing ABS. There is this Robo E3 printer, which is basically the same, but for $999, so I don't know what this is. Anyway, for this good quality printing and all the features, for me $399 seems a good price. Having the enclosed printer is great for kids and also represents better safety. Less smell when printing with ABS and also less sound. We also have the internet and the cloud connection, the removable and flexible bed, easy to take out nozzle, double lid screw for the Z-axis, we also have a filament sensor, touchscreen control and great prints. And for the downsides is the small space for the filament spool, the use of the Bowden extruder that might create some problems, it has no power down recovery and pretty much that's it, I like the rest of the features. So this was my review of the Flashforge Adventure 3 printer. I hope that you've made a general idea about this product and because of the good results I had from the beginning, I can easily recommend this printer. You have a support community, more information on the Flashforge website and more photos with the prints below this video. I hope that you like this video and if so consider subscribing. And please make sure that you activate the notification bell because otherwise you won't receive notification when I upload new videos. Also consider supporting my work on Patreon. So thanks again and see you later guys.